The Russians are coming into the smartphone market. Yota Devices, once better known for its relations with the Russian defense industry, will launch a dual-screen product in February. Well, Lucas Alpert is in Moscow. Lucas, we don't normally associate the Russians with high technology, do we? Uh, no, I mean, certainly Russia does not have a great history with consumer technology. So, um, But there is a, a, you know, a tradition here of... Uh, high levels of math and science education. So there's definitely a, a, a large pool of uh, highly skilled programmers and developers. Um, and they've had some success. Uh, people more familiar maybe with Kaspersky Labs uh, products and uh, you know, uh, Google founder Sergey Brin was, a, you know, was born in Russia. And the government here has been uh, actually trying to encourage uh, the development of this industry and have pumped a lot of money into that. So they've been making some you know, headway, but still, man, not a not a big success yet. Well, let, let's let's listen to the Yota CEO describing uh, the new smartphone. This is Yota phone, and this is a basically premium Android smartphone with electronic paper displaying on the back of the phone, and that actually helps to user uh, to do much more when the regular smartphone. For example, the reading time. Much, could be much longer because the ink display doesn't consume as much power as LCD display. Um, so basically, uh, uh, Lucas, I mean, here it is, two screens. For the moment, I gather it's the black and white. One of the screens is curved. Um, it preserves the text without running down the battery. Um, it's also powered by Google um, Android software, so we can get all the usual apps on it. Um, I mean, it, it looks as if it could be quite an interesting uh, uh, piece of kit. Yeah, it's definitely a, a novel approach. You know, the second screen, what it uses is um, this e-paper screen, which uh, most people are probably most familiar with, with uh, you know, uh, like the app Amazon Kindle and these sort of e-readers. Uh, what it is, is it's not an actual screen. It actually is a, a, like a burned image. And it only uses power when uh, uh, you're actually changing the image, when there's actually just a frozen image on it. it that said, it's not using any power. So... What that enables one to do is it's sort of synced with your normal Android-driven side with a with regular LCD screen. And you can sort of channel uh, live streams of uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, stock quotes, whatever you might want, onto this back screen. And it can kind of go almost in real time uh, without draining your battery really quickly or, you know, requiring you to wake your phone up constantly uh, like you Lucas, would normally. Uh, Lucas, I gather it also has a secret message code, which I should, which, which sounds pretty cute, that you can basically have, you know, this code telling you a message is there and there are lots. Of, I should imagine that would be quite popular for a lot of people. Oh, sure. I mean, the way they described it to us was, um, you know, that the, you could have a, 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 like a symbol come up on the back screen when you got a message from... Uh, you know, uh, say you're at work and you were getting a message from your wife and you uh, you didn't want it to be so obvious that you were getting your wife saying, hey, I love you or whatever. Yeah, you could kind of have a code come so only you would know what it was, that it wasn't, you know, so blaringly obvious to everybody else. So what are the, briefly here, Lucas, what are the analysts saying about it? it is, is it too quirky? Is it going to have novelty value? Well, uh, the analysts seem to think that, you know, this definitely is some innovation in this product, and they can see that that, that could appeal to some people. I mean, certainly there's going to be a bit of a learning curve because it, it utilizes this second screen in a way that most people may not be totally familiar with or, you know, find instinctive. So that's going to take some time and a lot of effort to kind of educate people on what this phone can do, and that could be a problem. But, you know, they say, you know, the, the industry hasn't really changed much in five or six years, so... You know, it may be due for a big innovation. Brilliant. Lucas, thank you very much. And just to remind you that Yota will be launching this in Barcelona in February.